can't buy It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, uh, like founders you've heard of, some you've never heard of. This is part of the Top Israel Leader series. And some others you should check out, Moise Navone of Mobileye. He talks about the Mobileye journey being acquired by Intel for $13.2 billion. That still uh, baffles me, uh, Liran. And, um, you know, fast growing companies like Kendigo, uh, Adam Feldman talks about how they grow e-commerce companies and um, Yuri Adoni, um, who is partner at Jerusalem Venture Partners, is author of Unstoppable Startup. Check it out. It will be coming out or it's come out by the time you listen to this. And he wanted to share the secrets to Israel's incredible track record, which today's guests will be sharing from the ground. Also, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. Uh, my co-founder, Rise25, and my business partner, John Corcoran, and we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 partnerships and clients and help you with run and launch your podcast. You know, to me, Laron, relationships is the number one thing in my life. I'm always looking at how do I give to my relationships. And the podcast allows me to profile other thought leaders and companies and give to them and give their and spread their message. So if you've thought about run, you know, launching or running a podcast, email us at Rise25. You could listen to our, my business partner and I banter like an old married couple on a video on Rise25.com. Actually, Liron, the, the motivation behind the podcast was more personal. Actually, my grandfather was a Holocaust survivor and his legacy lives on because of the interview the Holocaust Foundation did. So people can also check that out on inspiredinsider.com on the about page. So um, today's guest, I'm super excited and big, you know, thank you, Sean Levy for introducing me to today's guest. Um, Laurent Rose is a serial tech entrepreneur. He established after download, which is an Israeli, uh, Israeli startup sold to the tech unicorn iron source. And, um, if you've not heard of after download, it went from zero to $30 million in three years. They hired over 50 employees and was acquired by iron source for over $28 million. And he was managing director of Techstars Israel. He runs Rose Innovation and was one of the first investors in SimilarWeb, which is a known Israeli unicorn. He's also invested in Kenshu, Fiverr. You know, Laurent, I have several people, um, Buybox experts who are our friends and they have a great company. They, are, they love Kenshu. They, are, they partner on different Kenshu things. They, they love it as far as the, in the e-commerce uh, ecosystem. So, um, Liron, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So, I think I want to encourage anyone should be contacting you if they uh, want to get into the Israeli ecosystem, the investing in the Israeli ecosystem. I feel like from doing this top Israel business series, people are missing out if they're not in that ecosystem. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I've seen this um, study a um, couple of um, couple of days ago. You know, um, Tel Aviv, or, or basically Tel Aviv represents the entire country. We're a tiny country. Uh, we're like number five ecosystem um, in the world. So if Silicon Valley or the Bay Area is number one, and I, then I think like New York is um, number two, Boston number three, then London in the UK is number four. Uh, we're number five. So um, like we're one of those leading um, ecosystems. And I think, you know, a lot of um, investors uh, in the Bay Area and in, uh, in New York and Chicago have discovered um, the Israeli ecosystem, um, invested uh, a lot of money into local startups. Um, sometimes, you know, the valuations could here could be a bit lower than what they, um, you know, what they are in the Bay Area. So, yeah, I think this is, um, this is kind of like a big opportunity for, for investments to get, um, you know, um, um, a view of like into the local ecosystem and get some exposure to um, something that is out of the US. We're going to talk about the after download journey, but I kind of want to work backwards because um, when I was emailing with Sean, um, he basically said, um, what's interesting about Laurent is that he did invest it all in 2019. And um, I thought that was interesting. And um, you want to start off in your investment journey, um, was you want to talk about similar web? What did you see in similar web at the time um, that was like, okay, that's an obvious investment? You know, it's risky 
investing? Absolutely. Well, I mean, in this area, you know, like nothing is, is, is obvious. And, and SimilarWeb is an investment from 2009. So that's over a decade ago. Wow. Uh, but it's, it's like, it's a coincidence. You know, I, I ran into this person. I was sitting in a cafe in, in Tel Aviv. And, you know, I, I've seen this, this, this guy sitting next to me talking to someone. And, and, you know, I said to myself, hmm, this is like, I don't know, there's something about this, the way this guy talks like that kind of intrigues me. I don't know what he's, uh, he's up to, you know, you know, you know, I'll just ask for a business card and, and whatever. So that's what I did. And, you know, and I never follow up, uh, but I remember his name. And then I think it was like six months after that or a year after, you know, some, some other people that I know told me, you know, we're investing into this, this company, similar web. Um, um, you, you, you want to, you want to have a look? And I said, yeah, I, I remember this guy. I've, I've you know, I've, I ran into him like, um, you know, in, 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 in a cafe and yeah, this looks interesting. I'd like to have a look at the deck and so forth. And then, you know, I ended up investing. I think I was like the second or third um, check uh, into the company. There were like five people back then. And yeah, the, well, they're now like 500, 600 people. Wow. So this company grew immensely. They're like, um, basically, I think they're like the leading um, rating um, company. And if you want to, you know, have a look at uh, review um, traffic sources and, and, and where people are going on the internet, you know, um, and, and, and seeing where they're coming from and, and, and do this on a geographical uh, sort of break, breakdowns. And it's both web and mobile now. It's, um, it's grown immensely. It's, it's, it's a great company. And, you know, they, I think they're like, at some point they will be probably going for an IPO or, yeah. or an MBA. Looking back, Laurent, what was intriguing you? was about this person you think well people say you know that you invest in the jockey right and who's running the company so you you saw something in this person and it was from your partially your experience partial gut what what do you think it was it's yeah it's it's a mix of those things you know um i wasn't i was less experienced um 10 years ago 11 years ago than i'm now but still i mean those like investing in these these this um early stage like pre-seed startups uh, it's a lot about, I'd say, intuition and anomaly detection. There was something about this guy, you know, the way he looks, the way he talks was kind of, you know, it, it, it's kind of different than, than, than how most people do this. You know, he was that kind of an outlier in some way. I couldn't exactly say Can't what. put your finger on it. Um, but, you know, yeah, this is like a special guy, you know. Um, I'll keep this business card. I, you know, maybe, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll dive in and, 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 you know, uh, try to learn more about this company, but definitely it's, it's, this is not a, a regular guy, you know, and, and that's kind of the way this thing started. It's always about the team. Yeah. And so what was also interesting is, so you invested in that as you were building after download from a timing perspective. Actually what, before. Actually oh, before. This, yeah. Yeah. I think I invested into a similar way. I think I got kind of at the same time, we started after download in early, 2010. So yeah, it's kind of around the same time. And so what were you doing before after download? Were you so, just doing investments? Um, well, I, I started with online marketing um, back in, in, in 1999. So I did a lot of online marketing as an affiliate marketer for software companies for like nine or 10 years before that uh, for software companies, global software companies. Um, distributing their, their um, B2C applications over the web. Um, this was, uh, it was like um, uh, a business who relied mostly on, on search engine marketing, um, um, pay-per-click, SEM, uh, PPC, uh, SEO, and so forth. Um, I started to do investments in 2006. So, so Ken Shu was um, the first, the, the, my first investment. Really? Wow. E Back in 2006. Exactly. What was yeah. the e-commerce space in 2006? Well, yeah. So, so, so Kenshu, um, basically what they, they were trying to do is. Um, Kenshu is an Israeli company? It is. Right. It is. Wow. Yes. Um, and I'm, I, I thought was, it was like a Japanese company from the name or something. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a Japanese, um, I think it's a Japanese word for, for winning or, or something okay. like that. Um, but yeah, it is an Israeli company. Um, they are, I think they're like 500, 600 people uh, strong and half of the team is over here in Tel Aviv and then the other half is spread um, 
you know, uh, globally uh, in the US, Europe, and, 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 um, and the Asia Pacific. Um, so back then there were three people and, and, and they were like the first time I ever invested into um, a tech company. Um, it was very, very close, uh, closely related to what I did. So I was like doing web online marketing and these guys came with a platform to, to uh, manage um, search engine marketing across multi-platform. It was Google AdWords, um, Microsoft Bing back then, and um, Yahoo. Um, and then I think they, they did, they had Facebook and, and Amazon later as well. Um, same thing with similar web. I mean, these, uh, this company, um, you know, they, were, they did web analytics. Um, and that was like very, very closely related to what I did as, um, as an online marketer. Um, so, you know, I had this kind of advantage. So I could base, I was kind of the user of both. Yeah. Of the, of these You're like, this companies. is really good for myself. I could see how this will be valuable for others. Exactly. So, you know, I can use this. You know, this is really good. I need this. So probably I'm not the only one. Um, and, and, you know, I can kind of evaluate this um, because I'm like the, the perfect user. What was the size of Kenji in 2006? What was it like compared to now? So, so they just like, um, you know, they just launched, launched the company. I, I remember meeting like the three founders back at the CEO's um, living room. Um, and, you know, if I want to like get into a little bit into the numbers. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, so, whatever you're allowed to share. Yeah. So I think like um, with Kenshu was like $1 million pre-money back then. And similar web was kind of the same. I think it was like 1.2 or 1.5 free money. I mean, you don't get this kind of valuation. There's been, um, you know, like there's been like an inflation in, in, in early stage, like pre-seed companies. You don't get like below 2.5 or $3 million these days. But back then you can get them at, you know, 1.2 or, mm. or something like that. Wow. Um, and so, so you're kind of through the Kenshu journey, the similar web journey, and then at what point did you invest in Fiverr? Okay, Fiverr is, is much later. So, so um, I think it was like back in 2015. Um, that's a um, couple of years after I am, um, after Down was acquired by uh, Iron Source. Um, I um, joined forces with uh, with a with a VC fund, uh, a small fund, like a founders fund uh, by the name of uh, Circa, and. And, you know, we invested into um, 18 companies. Um, it was a very, very small fund, $12 million in total. Um, and so far, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like really proud of what we did. Um, you know, we have nine exits it's, uh, out of 18 investments. Um, and, and five wow. is one of them. Um, yeah, th these are, this is not an early stage fund. Yeah, I have to, I mean, I have to say this is like um, kind of growth stage. So like these are like round Bs. And the criteria was that, you know, these, these companies have to have a tier one um, VC. Uh, so co-investing with tier one VC like Sequoia or, or one of these guys. Um, so yeah, nine out, out of 18. And, you know, we've got a, a couple more that probably are gonna um, exit. So we're gonna have like a very, very high hit ratio in that fund. It's really good. Um, can you say, what, what are you looking at now? So, okay, so you, you asked about 2019. You know, yes. I was, um, I was thinking that 2019 was kind of a peak year. Um, you know, valuation were like skyrocketed. Uh, everything was like very expensive. We, we, we've seen, uh, we're talking about you know, everything. This sounds like, like an urban legend now. I mean, you know, we're like post COVID-19 now. I know. Uh, yeah, in 2019, uh, you know, like every, everyone was starting companies here in Tel Aviv. You would see the, the, these, like these guys, you know, sitting uh, in a cafe. Everyone is having, sitting with their laptops in cafes and, you know, talking about their next startup. People were raising, um, um, you know, money on, on PowerPoints with three, four, five million dollar um, pre-money valuations uh, without any traction whatsoever. Yeah. You're like now, running a company is hard. Come on. <laughs> so, um, you're, th you're um, thinking running, running companies hard, you know, like show me some, you can't just show me a PowerPoint anymore. Exactly. So, yeah. So, you know, any traction. And I was thinking, you know, like, this is like way too easy. Um, lots of um, um, foreign VCs, um, non-Israeli VCs came into, the, into Israel in the last couple of years. Um, you know, money was, 
was abundant and you know like money was chase, chasing deals rather than startups chasing funding so so for me as as an angel investor um you know it was really really hard to compete with with all this like cheap money that came from from these investors and i would say you know i, I don't have to do this you know i, I you know I'm, I'm doing my personal capital um i'm investing out of my own balance sheet i don't have to invest if i think it's too expensive then you yeah. know i'd rather wait uh and, and and do this when things are more quite obviously i didn't expect um covid19 um right. But like these early successes I had with Kenshu and, and SimilarWeb, like SimilarWeb was 2009, 2009, so that's just after the financial crisis. And I was thinking, you know, this guy's like really brave. If he's like starting a company now, when like everyone's like, you know, everyone lost Scared. a ton of money in, in 2008, and this guy's like brave enough to start to do a startup now. You know, these, these, these are the times when like real founders, like entrepreneurs, you know, stick to this. And, and, and the, you know, and these, these guys who are just there for like an opportunistic, um, you know, because it's like easy, they leave. When, when, it, when like funding gets hard, like now in, 2000, in, in 2020, like these guys, you know, um, you know, look back and say, no, this is too hard. We're going to look for a job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, not saying you want this to happen, but it's almost timed perfectly. You're like 2019's inflated. Who knew it would just, things would crash with the whole crisis. So what are some of the things you're looking at now? Are there certain companies that you are looking at now or, or maybe genres of companies now that um, you're seeing what's happening? Right, yeah. So, so you know, we're now like COVID-19. Um, this was like totally unexpected. And obviously the valuations are, are going down now, but surprisingly enough, you, you can see like there's like this um, phenomena that the, the Nasdaq um, is going is going up. Um, S and P in, in the public markets is, is kind of steady. It, it recovered most of um, um, of the drawdown uh, from March, but but the Nasdaq, the technology, and, and specifically the the fangs that Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, they're actually um, much higher now than what they were in January 1st. So, yeah. so technology, basically what we're seeing here is, um, you know, technology is like speeding up. Um, you know, we're like kind of covering, I would say like five years at least. You know, we're like now at 2025 and the, the virtual world is kind of expanding and growing on the expense of, of the brick and mortar world, so, so to speak. Um, and we're seeing like, you know, retail and tourism and, 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 and um, travel, like suffering basically, you know, like, uh, planes are ground, like planes are grounded, hotels are not, um, you know, they're like not, not um, you know, they, you, don't, they, you, don't, you don't get tourists now, you know, Israel basically forces a, you know, a 14 day quarantine on everyone that comes in. So, so you know, like these sectors are, are kind of, um, basically on, on total, um, total hold, but, but technology and startups, surprisingly enough, some of these companies, you know, like, like Wix, um, which is another Israeli company, public uh, Israeli company, uh, and like um, Fiverr, and now we have this new company, Lemonade, who just um, uh, went IPO uh, in, in, in New York um, um, last week, I think. You know, these companies are actually expanding. Oh, another one is Monday. That's another Israeli company, monday.com. They're not public yet, but they're like, uh, you know, the valuation is now like around two billion dollars. So, so like these companies are actually growing um, in this uh, time on, on the expense of, of brick and mortar. So, yeah. so because they're all virtual, they're living in the virtual they're world. Not virtual, um, they they they're not, um, you know, it's not enterprise sales. So they're not like selling you know, a million dollar contracts with, with large enterprises. They, they have these users who are paying, you know, $200 per year or, you know, $500 and it's all virtual and they're able and, and advertising, you know, um, on, on Google and Facebook is cheaper now because some of these brick and mortar businesses um, are not advertising um, because they're kind of, their business is, is, is on hold. So, 
So, so Monday and, and, and Wix and these companies are able to get, um, you know, the customer acquisition cost is going down um, and they're able to grow uh, in, the, uh, uh, in COVID-19 times. This is like, and, and, and the same is kind of true for startups. Um, you know, startups uh, who are totally virtual and, and this can, could be in, you know, uh, in, um, in um, telemedicine, um, it could be in, in, in like virtual uh, remote work uh, management. And there's certain areas who are actually benefiting from COVID-19. And these are the companies, you know, that um, I'm looking into. Mm -hmm. Is there a company lately that you could talk about? Um, you don't have to name their name if you don't want to, but, and what you just evaluate, I like to hear how you think on, is this, a viable investment for you? Like, what are you looking for? What are some red flags? What are some things? Because you're investing your own money. So it's, you know, it's, uh, you're, you're really probably digging deep into the, the team and the numbers, but what, what do you look for? Is there a, uh, a case in the past, you know, couple months that you could talk about? Sure. So, so I'll give you an example from, from the last couple of days. So, mm -hmm. Here's a company, I will not name names, but here's a company that is, is kind of looking at um, human resources, um, um, which, you know, in, in, in startups, like the, 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 the highest cost, the highest expense is, is on, on salaries, basically. That's like most where of the money, the burn rate, it goes to, 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 to human capital, to people, or um, more, more than into like, you know, rent or, or, or um, or um, um, equipment. And here's this company that wants to kind of um, give uh, management an alert. And, and this is especially, um, you know, more, um, I would say, relevant to COVID-19 times because like of this remote, working from remote, working from home. So, you know, you, you're running like this company and you have like 100 people, you know, you're running a, 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 an R&D department, you have 100 people reporting to you. And all of them are like working from home and you're kind of, kind of losing control. And, you, and the last thing you want is people, you know, leaving and, you know, and, and, and leaving their, their job and, and starting to work for your competitor, right? And, but they're not coming into the office any, uh, every day now uh, and you don't know what's going on. So, so here's this company who came with a solution to um, kind of um, give you like a red flag if something, uh, um, you know, appears that, you know, someone uh, is um, maybe spending less time on Slack or maybe they're spending less time on Jira or on Monday, which like is there, you know, on, on company systems, on company um, cloud-based systems, you know, they detect uh, without, without like, um, um, you know, uh, going into privacy issues or, or kind of... Um, Installing a, a, stone a camera in yeah, their home spying, office or something. <laughs> yeah, without actually spying on their employees, but they're kind of able to detect if something is kind of wrong with with any of the employees. You know, maybe they they you know maybe they're not spending the same time on 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 company systems and so forth. And basically, what they do is you know it's the same with COVID nineteen. It's either you know an employee is green, so he's okay, everything's fine. Um, you know could be yellow, you know, maybe, you know, something in, in his behavior uh, is, is kind of, the uh, system is not sure, or red. So say you have like 100 people and then you have, you come into the office and it's say, look, these five people are red um, because we, we the, 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 the system has detected that, um, you know, they're not behaving the way they usually do. So now you're, you know, and you know that as their manager, you know, and, and if an engineer leaves you, you know, that's like, that's, that's expensive. I mean, replacing a, an R&D full stack engineer, that, that could be, you know, a, a few hundred thousand dollars worth of damage if someone like that leaves. And if you can prevent that, you know, maybe, maybe they're having, you know, trouble at home. Maybe like one of their kids yeah. is not going to, to school because of COVID-19. Someone like, could be sick. Yeah. Totally. Maybe somebody's sick, you know, maybe they have like, maybe they're, you know, there's not, they're not really leaving, they want to leave, but. You know, we just want to make sure that everything is okay and kind of detect that beforehand and, and making sure that, you know, if you can prevent, um, uh, you know, um, people from, from, um, yeah. 
leaving and you know and, and you know you save a ton of money for the company so so i think that's kind of a solution that's kind of covid 19 um um positive i would say this this company could succeed and then when they share the information is this typically they already have users of it or is it pre is it just a idea at this point what phase are they in so, so yeah so, so that, that's a very good question so so for me to actually uh, you know consider investing and when i say I, you know, I invest my own money but i usually come as a, as a bigger gra- uh, bigger group of, of investors so i'd rather come as a as a syndicate of investors, you know, um, investing say like $2 million rather than my, my own uh, personal check, which is usually a hundred K. Um, so, you know, we'd like to see um, some, some traction. So obviously when, when, when this is just an idea and, and it's just PowerPoint, um, this is um, kind of, you know, it, it's obviously the stakes are higher. So, so you, you could get in at, at a much lower valuation but obviously the risk is much higher than this team will not accomplish anything. And, you know, it will kind of fold uh, before even uh, they sign up their first paying customer. Um, so, so the kind of my, my strategy here or my tactic, you know, I'm, and, and I'm exposing this uh, over your um, uh, podcast is basically try to have at least two um, data like touch points with a team. So what, what I would say, you know, I would say to these guys, look, this is like really interesting. I think this idea is, is awesome. Uh, why don't you, you know, why don't we um, kind of speak in, in, in two months time and, you know, keep my email, keep my um, um, contact details and do the same for every other investor you speak to at this stage, um, you know, and, and touch base with me in two months time. And, 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 and then what I will be able to see Kind of the progress that this particular team has accomplished within that time frame. So, so you know, I've seen them now. I will see them in two or three months' time, and then they will tell me, "Look, we were able to, um, you know, secure, for instance, a million dollars worth of um, safe notes um, from this and these investors. You, you know, you want to join us now? We, we've we've signed up. You know, the, the MVP is ready, or the, the alpha or, or beta, beta is ready now. We already have POCs with like seven customers." which we didn't have when we sp- spoke to you three months ago. And now we'll go, hmm, these guys, you know, they, they kind of deliver. They like, you know, I've seen them. They're taking twice. action. They're taking action and they're not just talking. And now I've got like two bits of information, you know, and I can kind of say, you know, I can kind of extrapolate. Okay, so if they were able to do this in three months, what could they do in three years, right? So, you know, if the deal um, makes sense at, at the second, um, you know, Kind of point of touch, then you know it's it's much better than you know, like relying on a single uh, point data point. Does Thanks for sense? sharing. That. Yeah, totally. And I could see the huge value of actually that particular company because you can't just walk around the office and go, you know, Joe looks really down today. You have no idea, but that activity will show you. Is there are they yellow? Do we need to check in with them? What's going on? I can see that being valuable. But I like hearing your thought process. Um, you know, Liron, since we only have about like six more minutes, um, I want to talk about the after download journey a little bit and um, amazing growth. And um, what were some of the highlights uh, of the after download journey? And uh, maybe how did you meet your team to start? So, so like the, 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 the logic behind launching this company, you know, um, as I said, I was doing like online marketing for, for these software companies back then. And then, you know, Google who is basically the big, uh, the big gorilla in, in, in this business, you know, they, they have these um, like content and user policies, which, um, you know, became harder and harder. It was harder and harder to comply with all of their um, requests. So, you know, I was thinking, you know, these software companies are all relying on, on Google and, and, uh, and Microsoft for um, doing their search engine marketing. How about we come up with this other like ad network, which will have similar quality of traffic, you know, like Google, and we'll do PPC as well. We'll charge our, our customers pay-per-click because they already used to do that. And if our quality is as good as Google's, you know, and with us, we'll, we'll have, we're not, we don't have to do all these like policies. You know, we can, our policies could be more relaxed than Google's and they will welcome to us. Um, you know, because we're like our traffic is converting to 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 um, to 
to customers, to paying customers or downloads as good as Google's. So, so that was kind of the logic here. Um, and so I met my uh, co-founder um, through an introduction. Um, and I think, you know, that was like a very, very good timing to, to launch that kind of company. I would say that if I was trying to do the same now, 10 years later, probably uh, we wouldn't succeed. But back then was a kind of innovative um, and we kind of hit, you know, we kind of identified the needs of our customers and all of them um, had problems with, with those, uh, you know, with these companies like Microsoft and Google. Um, they, they were like closing their accounts virtually saying, you know, we can't, you, can't, you guys can't advertise with us because this and this reason. And, and you know, they had these um, advertising budgets um, uh, and they, did, they didn't have where to go. So, and they came to us, obviously, well, we, we, they, um, we, had, to, um, we had to find a way of making this uh, sound easy. But right. you know, when, we, when we could prove to, to these guys that, you know, do a test campaign with us, $5,000 a month, $10,000, you know, see how it goes. Um, and, you know, if it, it works well, you know, double, the, double your budget uh, the next month. Um, it worked well for them. Uh, and, and that's how we grew from it was a bootstrap company so we didn't have external wow. investors um i think we were like break eve, breaking even after six months um and yeah in three years we, we grew this business from from zero to 30 million dollars worth uh, of revenues in three years that's amazing when someone's looking to sell their business or get acquired what are some of the things you maybe look back on said thank god we did this or what should other people who are selling watch out for? So, so two things. I mean, you know, um, Iron Source, which was the company that that bought uh, acquired us, um, and they're like this huge unicorn now. Uh, I think the the, the last um, deal was like kind of one point five billion or something. They they like we. I think we were their first acquisition, and then they went to to um, you know acquire a, a few more. Um, and the one. The, the, the good thing about it is was that kind of we knew them. They were one of our um, uh, partners. So for a long time, before we actually went through an m and with them, we kind of worked with them for um, a year or two. So we kind of knew them and we kind of knew the DNA of the company. Um, you know, uh, we were used to working with them. And then kind of, um, they, they made a few offers and we didn't accept their first offer. Mm. Um, you know, they, why not? They, 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 and, you know, why? Let's do this deal. You know, we want to, we want to, we want to buy you guys. You know, here, here's our offer. Uh, and and we like kind of internally in, in the board. You know, we discussed and we were thinking. You know, we can grow our business um, independently. And you know, we were not like rejecting the idea the idea of of, of um, you know of getting acquired and uh, by these guys. But this offer is not good enough. We can like grow our business and maybe. Um, you know, uh, get a better offer next year. Um, so that's what we did. And I think in, in year three, when we kind of approached 25, 30 million dollars of, of revenues, I think they, they approached us with an offer that we thought was good enough. Um, and it's not that we didn't have like second thoughts. You know, when you sell a company, you never know if, you know, you, you know what if we wouldn't sell this company to right. these guys and we would have you know, uh, what if we go to a hundred million? What if we go to a billion? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it, it either goes to a hundred million right. and by, by running this thing yourself, or maybe it doesn't. So, so you, you never know. So, so what we did is we accepted their offer, which was a, a mix of, of cash and uh, sh like share stock in iron source itself. And that gave us an, uh, you know, we, we got some cash, um, uh, and, and, and then the upside within iron source, if iron source will do well, then basically we You're have betting the, on them. Yeah. We're betting on, on, on them. So, so, and, and I think that then went well, um, the company, um, did really well. Um, and, and yeah, the rest is history, I guess. Laurent, thank you. First of all, um, last quick question. We're right at the time. I always ask for a challenge moment, a low moment, that you had to push through and then a proud moment because you know this journey is rocky it's messy it's all over the place even though it feels like it seems like 
like it's just skyrocketed. There's I'm sure points that are dipping in that three year period, even though that's like exponential growth. What's been a challenging time, low moment, and what's been a proud moment for you? Okay, so I would say, you know, there's, when, when you do these investments, so, so I mean, some of these deals, you know, succeed and, and you, you, you win, and, and sometimes you lose, uh, the company goes, goes down. And, and, but that's kind of part of doing business, and, and that's okay. Uh, I think if you're asking for, um, about the low point, so I was running like textiles in Israel for two years, um, and at some point, you know, they, they made a decision to, to pull out of, of Israel. And oh, really? Kind of, yeah. Uh, then they reversed the decision. Like, I think, um, like a year later, they, they decided to, to come back. But when they, you know, I was running it for two years here and I, would, I was thinking, you know, this is like a huge opportunity. And I was trying to convince them because we were doing this with, uh, with a corporate partner. Um, and I was thinking, you know, even if the corporate partner doesn't want to continue, um, you know, doing this, tech stars should, you know, invest their own money and having their own accelerator in Israel. So I was trying to convince management that they should, um, you know, stay in Israel, even if that means that they have to fund the accelerator from their own um, balance sheet rather than having the corporate partner do this. Um, but, you know, they went, yeah, they, they didn't want to do that. Uh, because they were thinking there were, there were too many accelerators in Tel Aviv. Um, so that was kind of a, a long point because, you know, I was like really um, um, happy to, to do you this. You spent a lot of time. I was reading about it that you, you know, recruited over 100 mentors, you know, like there was a lot of work that went into that. Well, that was a lot of work. And, you know, I had like 20 companies go through two batches of, of textiles. In and some of these companies, they're all fintech. So some of them have... I've raised a bunch of money now, and we will see a few good companies so coming out of those two years. Um, but Textiles decided to pull out, and then uh, a year later, they, I guess they figured out that it was like the wrong decision to do, and they came back to Israel and relaunched in Israel. Um, but yeah, that was like too late for me. So Yeah, proud moment for you. So um, I would say um, that, you know, having started after download um, and growing that company into 50 people, and um, before we actually um, got acquired, I think we were like really, really proud of the way we ran the company in terms of staff, in terms of of you know employee satisfaction nps scores and so forth hmm. we had a great team um you know the way we ran the company i was like really proud to be responsible for for like most of these people were like at least anything between seven or ten years younger than me so you know i was responsible for for these guys income and and they were like really proud to be a part of our team so, so growing that company into what it was and, you know, having that iron source, you know, bid and, and, and offer, uh, you know, offer uh, to acquire us. And then and they, they made a few offers, you know, and they, were, they knew what they were doing. They're like really buying a great asset. Um, that may be proud, you know, growing a company from zero to, to what it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you, Laurent, for sharing your story. Where should we point people towards to find more, learn more about you online? Sure. So, so, you know, if, if people go on Google and like go like type Liron Rose, that's L-I-R-O-N-R-O-S-E, or, you know, go LironRose.com, um, they will find me. They will be able to, um, to reach out, get in touch, um, you know, send me an email. Um, so if anyone wants to you know, get, learn more about um, the Israeli ecosystem, um, what we call the Startup Nation, um, and get more visibility into that market, they're more than welcome to uh, reach out and, and uh, talk to me. Cool. Thank you. All right, go to LeronRose.com, check out more. And uh, thanks. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you. What I've got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same.